7765. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the meeting of the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee held on the 7th of August 19, uh, 2024 in the Town Hall. Um, I would like to welcome from uh, Litchfield Miss Barton, who is the Director of Residence and Business Services, and Mr Darren Phillips, the Operations Manager. Before we start, I'd like, with the Committee's approval, to give a vote of thanks to our street scene operatives, who, following the disorderly incident uh, on Sunday night, started at 4.30am on Monday morning to clear up the mess left in the castle grounds and surrounding areas. This committee would like to record its it's a vote of, uh, record their appreciation also to the public spirited members of the public who came out and took part in the clear up operation including our own very own councillor margaret clark do i have a seconder Council. all those in favor thank you very much unanimous would you please pass our thanks on to the street scene team thank you right we now come to uh minutes Oh, sorry, we've got no apologies because everybody is here. Uh, right, we're looking to approve the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 7th of July 2024. Do we have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Adams. Uh, have we a seconder? Councillor Clark, Lee Clark, thank you very much. Right, are there any declarations of interest? No, thank you. Uh, I'm not. Ex I'm not. I haven't got any updates from the chair. Um, we'll leave that to the meeting at the end of the month. Right. We now go to item five: annual garden waste subscription charge. And I hand over to Mrs. Goodwin. Thank you, chair, and thank you for those kind words um, for street scene and officers. That's very much appreciated, and I will make sure that they get that message first thing in the morning or later tonight if they're working. Um, thank you. So in front of you this evening is the um, report for the annual garden waste subscription charge. Um, the joint waste service is delivered um, in conjunction with Litchfield. They're the, the managing agents, if you like, for us. And the, my colleagues are joining us tonight and they will take us through both reports, this one and the, the one that's proceeding. But the report in front of you is asking for you to scrutinise the decision to increase the annual subscription charge for the green waste. That charge has not been increased for some while, as you can see within the report, and there is now an actual cost to the council budget. Um, and I'll hand over now to Lizzie to, to take that forward. Sorry, Miss Barton. Thank you. Is that? Yeah. Good evening, all. Lovely to meet you all, and thank you for inviting me and Darren here tonight. So, just to take you through the um, garden waste um, charging proposal, uh, in Litchfield, we increased our garden waste charge last year, um, and we moved from um, 36 to 40 pounds. Um, and as part of that proposal, we also incorporated an increase every year that goes up with the consumer price index. So that moving forward, we won't need to take a decision back to our overview and scrutiny or our cabinet to make a decision, but we will increase every year with CPI unless we choose not to do so. What that enables us to do in Litchfield District, um, and this is the decision before you, is to ensure that the service is delivered at full cost recovery. So only those customers who um, benefit from the service or use the service pay for the service. The alternative is obviously what Tamworth has been doing to date, which is underpinning some of the cost of that service with, with I believe, your reserves, so that residents that um, don't use the service are, in effect, funding an element of the service. Um, to give you a little bit of a flavour as to what that would mean for um, customers um, across Tamworth and across Litchfield in comparison to residents that live in nearby areas, um, the £40 fee that we charged last year um, kind of sat in the middle of um, local charging. So you've got areas like Cannock Chase District Council that currently charge 38 pounds and 50p, Newcastle Underline that ch charge 39 pounds and 95p. 
Stafford Borough that charges £42, North Warwickshire that charges £43, and then up to Birmingham City Council that charges £60. And if you decide to go further south, Oxford City Council that charge £85. Um, so the, the £40 fee seemed very um, appropriate to us and it achieved that full cost recovery, which was important to our members. Um, the service delivers 23 collections a year, so it's every other, other week, and we don't collect, collect over the Christmas period. One of the concerns that was raised at um, Monday night's um, full council briefing with your members was that um, the increase in cost could lead to fly tipping, um, which was a concern that our members also had. We haven't found that to be the case. We haven't found any additional fly tipped garden waste, and we haven't had a huge amount of um, feedback from the County Council either that their garden waste collections at the tip have gone up massively. So there hasn't been, and there hasn't been a drop in subscriptions either. We've had an increase in subscriptions. So whether that reassures um, you as members that the increase in cost will not necessarily impact subscription levels and will not necessarily impact residents negatively. Um, and we haven't had any complaints either. We haven't had any, any people complaining that the price has gone up. So uh, the proposal before you today is to mirror our increase. Um, and that obviously is a decision for Tamworth Borough Council to make itself. In terms of the mechanics, we can accept you having any price you wish, but the impact is on your own financial situation as to whether or not you choose to continue to subsidise some of the cost of the service or achieve full cost recovery, which is what Litchfield District Council has chosen to do. I hope that summarises it sufficiently for you, but if you've got any questions, please do ask myself or Darren. Thank you. Thank you. Just with regards to the cost, so at the minute, how many collections is it, sorry, per, per year? Did you say 23? So it's 23 per year. Sorry. So have we looked at, you know, to reduce the cost or keep it static? to go from 23 to reduce the number of collections? So the number of collections was reduced. So when we first started the service, it was, I believe, 25 collections a year, but we reduced that down in order to reduce um, or to maintain the cost at 36 as it was. Um, feedback from customers is that they like the collection starting when they do and they like the collection finishing when they do. So from a customer satisfaction point of view, we have no data that would suggest that we should reduce that number of collections down further and indeed residents may feel that that is a more of a reduction in service than expecting them to pay four pounds extra just with regards to the costing so and i don't know if this is directed at you or if it's um so if if people don't take up the service and they decide actually I'm going to use my grey my green uh, my grey wheelie bin, which obviously they can do. What happens if you know what's the cost? Because I'm guessing we've got to pay for a service. So is there a risk to say actually the deficit that we've got now could be greater because people decide actually I don't want to pay that, especially under the current climate at the minute with costs the way that they are. What would be you know what's the risk financially to Tamworth Borough Council if if I don't know say. 30% of residents decide, actually, I'm not going to pay for that. What's, what's the deficit then? I'm just trying to think, you know, what's the risk to us, you know, the deficit now to what it would be if 30% if decided, actually, I'm not going to use it anymore? I obviously don't have detailed figures on that, but what I can say is we didn't see a great shift in garden waste going into our black bins when we changed the price. Um, and we are working with the County Council very closely to ensure that the black bin waste is the correct black bin waste. Can I just, sorry. Open off, doesn't it? When did Litchfield change the, the price? When did it increase? So it was like last year. Okay, so I think my point is at the minute with everything, with costings the way it is, and then we've got affordability i think it's probably a little bit a little bit tight but i'll i'll wait for everybody else to to question
Um, from my quick maths, it's gone from one pound fifty six to one pound seventy eight per collection. I personally don't think that that's a massive jump. Um, I did have a resident today express their concerns about this to me. Um, but this was a gentleman who doesn't have a green bin and doesn't use it. And I think we need to remember it is an optional service. It isn't something that residents have to necessarily have. They are choosing to have this. And like you said, if you're saying in Litchfield that you're not seeing an increase in fly tipping, you're not seeing an increase in grey bin usage for um, garden waste, um, then I don't see why, I mean, me personally, why we shouldn't support it. I don't think it's a massive jump. I think if it was a lot more, but when you break it down for actually what you're getting for your value for money of a pound seventy eight collection fee and the bin itself, I personally think that's quite affordable, but I might be wrong. You're all welcome to argue with me, but that's just my opinion. Hi. Um, why out? Why are you doing automatic price increases by CPI? I mean, in theory, a CPI could be higher than the actual costs of bringing it back. Uh, a base costs. I mean, like you using it. So we've worked with our Section 151 officer with regards to using um, CPI as the best indicator to peg the increase to, um, and the calculations have been done to reflect the fact that. Our Section 151 believes that that's the most accurate representation of what the true cost increase will be. We won't ever know the full cost of recovery of the service until the end of the calendar year when we complete that year's collections. But we have to, because of direct debit, needing to set up the banking um, systems and also to build the systems to charge the fee to residents, we have to start the build work in the summer. So the closest um, increase pegging that we were told to uh, or been advised to use is the CPI which we take in June we take in July sorry from June CPI figure I mean why can't you um don't you have like advance deals where like you're paying the advance for you it's so, like I mean it sounds like me pay out your go kind of situation instead of like paying up front for you yeah correct I'm not sure I understand your question. So, yes, pe people pay up front for a year's worth of collections. If they pay later in the year, they only get the collections from the date that they pay until the end of that subscription year. No, I meant the council paying <coughs> for service, per service up front, or are we doing pay out you go? So it's, the, it's a customer pay, paid for service, which they individually subscribe to themselves. Uh, what I think Councillor Adams was getting to was, uh, in terms of CPI going up, are we not in a fixed rate deal with the supplier over a long term? I think that's what he was getting at, rather than the customer being in a fixed term. Mm -hmm. Do our rates increase each year and are we billed appropriately or is it a long-term contract at a set rate? I think that's what uh, Councillor Adams was, was getting to. I have a, a follow-up point on CPI, but does anyone want to pick up any further on? No, you, you've got a question. Um, it's in the recommendation is number three, isn't it? Uh, approve amendments set out in the report, which include basing of coming year's annual increase at June CPI figure and the previous one number two is under delegated powers and we've heard that Litchfield have chosen to automatically go up in line with CPI each year therefore can completely cut out elected members. Uh, there's a whole raft of this going on in politics and government at the moment. Let's get things automated so therefore members can be silenced and kept out of the way. Surely this reduces our opportunity to review this matter and other matters with fees and charges. You know, we, we review all our fees and charges annually, which we, you know, we take into consideration the increased costs or not. During the budget process, the first thing we see uh, when, we, when we see the budget are the technical adjustments, which are the increase in costs based on committee decisions and inflation increased costs. 
So automating this increase surely takes that away from the, the political you know, the political field and, and the people that are sitting in, in this room now. So surely, surely we can continue to review this on a regular basis as we do with all our fees and charges rather than just go, ah, that's fine, we'll just, uh, we'll just, let, we'll, we'll just let CPI control the rates that, that we should be making decisions on like we are now. I've got some other stuff as well, but that's my CPI point. If I come back to you on that one, um, Councillor Oates, I've been doing quite a bit of research myself. Um, and the approved medium term financial strategy, which was um, uh, passed, was assumed that a number of fees and charges would be increased in 2024 20, 25, including non statutory services, which this is, such as the green bin to ensure full but cost recovery. Now, I couldn't see in, in the, any of the uh, minutes and of comment of uh, going back this last year where it was said that this would not be gone the, the green bin wouldn't be put up um, until i was told that it was a decision made by the then chief exec and the leader of the council because it had been delegated now that delegation meant that sixty thousand pounds of reserves was taken out of reserves to subsidise this green bin charge. So, yeah, I know you're going to come back to me, but I just want to put this out. Now, this is what I have read and what I've researched. So I'm, you, can, you can correct me. But if, if in the approved medium-term financial strategy, the council is, assume, is, is saying that these fees and charges would be increased, uh, where does it say that they made an exception? I think you've really highlighted the point I'm making. This is the process we're doing, is reviewing those fees and charges. If we automatically go up by CPI each year, we remove that opportunity to review. And I think that's the exact point uh, you're raising, is this is what this is, this is about. It's, it's that opportunity to review as councillors and elected members, rather than an automated increase. Uh, in terms of £60,000 coming from reserves and, and this, this panic about the word reserves and MTFS is. That's how we run. You have an X, X amount of cash and you have to apportion it according to your priorities. If you spend more in one area than you had anticipated, you need to cut your cloth accordingly. It's, it, it, it's this, this fear of using some reserves. Well, actually, that's the cash the council has. It's what it's chosen not to spend this particular year as part of its budget. If the budget yeah. Can I remind you that I mean, I was on the council at the time it was all discussed and before it was actually fully set up. And one of the arguments that the controlling group made at the time was that because it was non-statutory and they were bringing in the charge, it was to be self-financing. Now, if it's supposed to be self-financing, when was the decision cha changed to make it subsidised? That's simple, when they chose not to increase it. You know, things, things change, people's priorities change, people move on, the financial situation changes. And as councillors, that's our job to respond to that. My concern is if we automate this in line with CPI, we lose the opportunity to have these discussions like, like we're having now. I take on board what you say. Right, do we have any other questions? Right, Councillor Price. Thank you, Chair. Um, not so much a question, but uh, more some comments on the report. Um, I, I'm, I'm struggling with it because I'm here to scrutinise a cost increase and whilst there is some words here that, that try to justify the cost increase, there is no cost for me to look at with regards to how we've come to the figure for the cost increase. And I agree with Councillor Statham, on paper looking at this, it's not a very big increase. But how are we justifying that? How? Can I sit here as a as a as a councillor and look at this and go right? Okay, it currently costs thirty six pound, and this is this is the cost breakdown for that thirty six pound. Um, we want to put it up to forty pound or forty one pound, and these are the reasons why this is the justification for that. This is how much fuel costs. This is how much the maintenance on the vehicle costs. This is how much the increased staffing costs. I've got none of that information, so I'm struggling to sit here and be able to put my hand up and say yes i agree with this and i think that we should approve the recommendations um 
I think the report is lacking in the information that I need to be able to give that decision. That would be my comment, Chair. Thank you. I'm sure people will take that on board. Um, I've got a question about direct debit payments. If you, I noticed that they said there would be an additional charge if you don't renew every year. So if you, if say you, 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 you um, buy into the service one year, but then you have a year break, and then you go back into the service, are you charging people additionally to set up the direct debit? And second. No, you, you wouldn't be char paid, charged more for going back into the service and you're not charged more for um, setting up a direct debit. There's no additional cost for doing that. Um, in terms of paying monthly, no, there's not an option for that. It's an annual subscription fee um, because what we do is we issue out a sticker. Um, and if we were to do monthly subscriptions and someone signed up for a month, We'd de and then they cancelled their direct debit, we'd have to be sending people around the district pulling stickers off bins, which isn't a practical solution. So it's a, it's a yearly annual direct debit. Thank you. Stephen. Um, I just want to revisit what Councillor Price has just said, and I'd actually like some clarity on what the reasons are. So if someone on the panel could break that down for us, that would be great, because I've just looked through it myself again. And actually, I, I do agree with him. There really isn't. The only justification we've been given is, well, here's a load of other prices. That that's not um, that's not a justification that I can go to a resident and say, well, we got told because other people have increased it, we have to. So if you can give us some sort of reasoning as to why, I think more people would be supportive. So I can't give you the detailed reason tonight, and the reason for that will be that. The last time your council decided not to increase the fee, you would have discussed those increases in costs in great detail and then chosen to subsidise it with the £60,000 that you did for this year. Sorry, can I just respond? Um, there's a few of us sat here who weren't here for that. So I don't know how I meant to vote on something or agree on something just because I wasn't elected then. Do you know what I mean? No, absolutely. And... Um, you, you and your officer team um, and the Section 151 officer here, if you want to explore that further, you can certainly do that and we can supply any detail necessary to enable you to do that. But the reason for the cost increase is that the cost of running the vehicles has gone up. Obviously, we have pay, pay awards that all councils have to take on board. The cost of fuel has gone up. Um, and as a council, we, we are not able to make money on um, services. That's, that's set down in law. So the increase is to cover the additional costs of running the service. Obviously, if you want reassurance of that, then those figures can be provided. But I can give you that reassurance now that the cost increase reflects the cost of delivering the service. And the duty of our Section 151 officer and your own Section 151 officer is to ensure full cost recovery of that service and no more. If I can just highlight on page four of the report, it does say that cost pressures in the service include the increase in staffing costs following the 2023 pay settlement, fuel costs, fleet maintenance and replacements, measures to reduce the carbon footprint of the service, recycling credit reductions and gate fee price increases. You're right that they're not broken down in financial terms, but they are there in general terms. Yeah, I think that, that, that was the point that I was making is the, the reasons and, and, and I take them reasons on board and, and, um, and the same as everybody else, I know the cost of fuel has gone up. Um, the industry that I work in, all our costs have gone up. I understand that. I completely get that. But, but we are here to scrutinise the cost of this service and whether we pass that cost on to our residents. And I can't do that. That's the point that I'm making, is that whilst I don't disagree and I'm not questioning your character uh, or the fact that you are telling me that it reflects that, I can't see that. 
so because of that I, I can't support the recommendations that are in the report at this time if it was to come back to me with cost that I can look at and I can see the difference between what it was when it was set at 36 pound and what it's going to be when it's set at 40 pound then I can look at that and I can go yeah that's justifiable and I can go back to my residence and I can say we've approved this because of x y and z at the minute all I can approve all I could agree to it on is the fact that there, that there is some written word to say the cost of fuel has increased the cost of maintenance has increased there was pay etc uh, etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. and I can't justify that to a resident and, and I don't think many of my colleagues are able to do that either without having the cold hard facts in front of us I don't think that as a committee we can say we've done our job without them figures in front of us Thank you. Uh, do you want to respond? Does anybody want to respond to that? No? Fine. Um, are there any other questions? Councillor Clark. So th this decision is entirely your decision as a council. So our council has made the decision re in reflection of the costs to increase by a pound and made the decision last year to increase by four pounds. As a, as a service provider to yourselves, it's, it's, we're entirely agnostic as to what you charge for your brown bins and we can cope with you having a different cost to ours. So I'm certainly not here to encourage you to make any decision it's entirely up to you what you decide but if you want to achieve full cost recovery and you don't want your council to subsidize it the recommendation is that you move to the same charge as Litchfield which is 41 pounds but that is entirely up to you as as a council as to whether or not to do that Right, are there any other questions? No? I would just like to ask, and I don't know if the officer can tell me, this is Mrs Goodwin, who made the decision to um, not put the charge up and therefore take the money from reserves? And then who actually ratified that? Because my, I, I'm a chair of school governors, and if my head teacher wants to spend any money over £10,000, he has to come to the governors for approval. Now, I'd have thought with a, a cost of £60,000, there should be somewhere, either a cabinet or council meeting, where this would be ratified. And I, I can't see in any paperwork that I've read that that was done. And I'd just like to know, has that happened? Thank you, Chair. Um, in preparation for tonight, I thought that might be a question. I can't find that, but I did speak to the Section 151 officer, who was the Section 151 at the time, who was also unable to find the actual minute where that was um, agreed. We understand, however, that there was a discussion, and I think Councillor Thomas Jay confirmed this on Monday night, that there was a discussion between the Chief Exec and the leader of the time to not increase that payment and that that would be then put through the budget process. I also, um, sorry, I was just going to say something then. The um, so I haven't got anything to prove that, but I also understand that there is a de delegation to the chief exec and the, le the leader to make that decision. So there was no requirement um, that I can see in terms of governance to, to bring that decision, to make that decision any further or to report it to Cabinet. I cannot find a Cabinet decision. I, uh, before coming tonight, I asked the Deputy Section 151 to also search, and we could not find it. Sorry. Thank you. I'm just concerned that I don't think it's good governance to delegate a cost of this amount to just two people. Um, and I would like to make a recommendation um, that we 
look to strengthen our governance because I don't think this is correct. I haven't got the correct form of words at the moment, but I don't think it's right that £60,000 of taxpayers' money is just um, allowed to be distributed without any uh, reference to any committee or any ratification by a committee. Right, Councillor Statham. Uh, yeah, whilst, whilst I agree that is quite concerning, um, if that is something that we wanted to review, surely that's a constitutional issue? Because surely that doesn't just sit with this committee. So this might have to be a bigger conversation possibly at full council because I don't see how, you know, I agree with you that £60,000, a decision made by two people, is quite scary. Um, and that isn't how our democratic process works or should work in my opinion but um i just want to some clarity on what you said though you did say that it goes through the budget process surely there's my first year on council so you know i'm sorry if i don't fully understand the procedures but surely if it's going through a budget process it is going to go through some form of scrutiny i want to just get some sort of clarity whether it's a committee or officer Well, what normally happens, and I'm sure Councillor Oates will correct me if I'm wrong, is that all the decisions, um, the suggestions, go to a joint scrutiny committee for the budgets, and they're discussed uh, at length, and then all key decisions are highlighted, and they go into the budget, so you get all the different changes that the... the group want to make, uh, the council want to make, and then it goes to the budget council meeting, which everybody has the opportunity to debate what those decisions are and what, what things are going to be made. Now, a lot of things are statutory and can't be changed. There are some things that aren't statutory and can be changed. If you want to increase the number of play areas, for instance, or something like that. Now, that's then debated and then it's passed by full council. Now, that's what I'm saying, is I can't find individual minutes about this this item, and that's what concerns me, is that a, a figure of this amount... Now, I know we're a large company, you know, not a company, but a council. I know we have a lot of money, but even so, I think at this amount of money is quite considerable. And if we're choosing to take it from reserves, then and, and also then to do reserves the following year, then that's something that we need to consider. Right, I'll take. I've got Councillor Woods, then I've got Councillor Oates, and then I've got Councillor Adams. Thank you. Just a quick question, really, for clarification. If the committee were to reject this price increase, do we have a time scale in which we have to decide whether to increase or whether we take out the reserves? Is there a time scale we have to stick by? Yeah, there is, um, insofar as we need to start building the systems with the price included, including the direct debit um, payment <coughs> process, which is in early, um, I would say probably late August, early September, we need to know the price in order to be able to progress. But I can come back to you on, on Annie, on the exact prices, I mean the exact dates. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, just to pick up on the point earlier, uh, the first session of the budget is literally every single idea you can imagine. Uh, and last year we went through five times. I think we had a whole council discussions, so everybody had the opportunity to go, that's ridiculous, why are you even considering it? And, and so on and so forth. So, so there is that opportunity. Um, in terms of decisions being made, uh, we've got here recommendation two. Under the delegated powers, the cabinet member responsible for waste services uh, will approve price increase in consultation with the executive director organisations. It's here in this recommendation, the exact same problem we're raising as to what's happened historically. Two chief execs ago, and well, probably three leaders ago now, um, we used to have members' book items. And when those delegated decisions were made, it was written down on a bit of paper, it was signed for, and you could look at it. Yeah. Um, why the leader and the chief exec at the time chose to get rid of those, I don't know. Uh, I, was, uh, I was against that at the time, uh, but Councillor Statham is absolutely right. 
it's a constitution matter. And at the last full council, we were told the constitution will be reviewed shortly. So we need to make sure that's considered in, in that constitution. Because you're right, the, the, the checks and balances need to be in place. Um, now, I, that wasn't my original point for sticking my hand up. That's what I'll get distracted on. Because if you mention government, governance, I get all excited. It's a, it's a weird fetish I've got. Um, going back to the point that uh, Councillor Price raised, that he hasn't got the information on the costings, and the point that you've just raised there, Madam Chairman, about the use of, of delegated powers, we simply aren't in a position this evening to support the recommendations that are, on the, uh, that are in the report, are we? Uh, some people believe we haven't got the information. We're having issues with, with whether the governance is correct. Uh, for me, uh, I, I don't see how we can, we can move forward in this current situation with the recommendations that will be presented to Cabinet uh, in accordance with this report unless we raise our opinion and get those points across about delegated powers, about the lack of information and what we're being, and what we're being asked to do, Madam Chairman. I take on board what you say. Um, and I'll come back to you after Councillor Adams. Councillor Stay. On a motion, would you move it to a workshop in, for audit and government to look at? All the governance around it? It's you. And also, I don't like the idea of delegating price increase. All the automatic price increase by CPI. I am really against that. It's sort of way to suit me. Right. Mrs Goodwin, you wanted to come in. Yeah, please, if I could. Speaking honestly um, and completely transparently, this service has been with me a few, we a few weeks um, and I think it would be safe to say that I am not up to speed with the full governance arrangements around delivering of this service. And if I'm absolutely honest, um, Litchfield have took me by the hand through some of the decisions that you're being asked to make tonight and they have been very supportive of, with us and giving us all the information and I can say the same that the Councillor Whitehouse from Lichfield has done for Councillor Foster so I'm very grateful for that but the point I want to make is the governance arrangements around waste um, I can't present, say to you, this is where those decisions are made, this is where the constitution of the waste sit, this is where how the decision making power of the joint waste board has and the decisions that they're entitled to make, like I can do with every other aspect of my role. So I take on board your comments around um, what is delegated and what isn't. And I'm, I'm sure we're, you know, I've worked with a number of leaders and portfolio holders, and I know sometimes that we do have to amend that decision and make that decision for the best um, delivery of our services and for timely decisions to be made. But I take on board that your comments around governance, and, you know, I'm sure Anna, Anna and I, who are now leading this, you know, we do need some support on this. So if there was to be a recommendation around coming back to you with a future report around the governance arrangements and how they could be tightened up so that you, in terms of managing the performance and scrutinising the performance of the Joint Way Service, and with me as the executive lead, I'd be happy to, to work with Litchfield and, and anyone else to do that. So, um, But I think it is time, this decision... If we do fall behind with this decision in terms of time making, that does put 65,000 onto the budget line and every 30,000, I always say, is a job. Um, but uh, obviously it is your decision. Thank you. Okay, I've got a station. Um, it's actually relating to what you've just said. Uh, I wanted to know, obviously, why it's... I don't want to, this is going to come across really harsh, but I wanted to know why it's taken so long to come to this point if we've got four weeks to make a decision and if there's issues with the report and it, it's going to, you know, be a massive impact on the budget. Um, that's one of my main concerns. And then the second thing I wanted to raise, which um, you might be able to help me with, Chair, um, the second point, does that apply to multiple um, committees or is it just this committee specifically this is just to this thing but um, following on from what you've said 
I've listened to what everybody's saying, um, and I think that if we look at the recommendations, I understand about the increase, and I was wondering if we could have a report back, because we've got another meeting at the end of this month. If we had a breakdown of those costs, we could then defer this to the end of the month with the breakdown of costs, and then vote on that then. I don't know how people would feel. That this, this part, I know it's got supposed to be going to Cabinet tomorrow, but if this bit cannot, if, if you cannot agree to this part, I'm looking at recommendation one, which is fairly urgent, but it, we have got leeway up until beginning of September, and we do have a meeting in, in August, that we could look at that and we could meet and we could have a, a straightforward item at the beginning of our meeting in August, the end of August. The other one, I think we've all agreed that we're not happy with um, delegated powers as such, and that needs to go back. So that needs to go back to Cabinet and needs to be fed into our Constitution. Um, and I think, therefore, item three falls at the moment. Now, I can see that Councillor Oates has got his hand up. Right, I'm prepared to listen to what he's got to say. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I was getting all excited. Um, completely agree with your, with your position and bring it back. The difficulty is it's due at Cabinet tomorrow, which means we do need to make a recommendation to Cabinet. Otherwise, Cabinet will consider it within their rights, consider it in isolation of our conversation this evening. Uh, so we do need to make some sort of recommendation that if we defer it till our next meeting, Cabinet needs to defer their decision to allow us time to, to make our representation on, on those points. Uh, so, so if that's your direction of travel, Madam Chairman, I'm happy to move that we recommend to Cabinet this is deferred to allow scrutiny the opportunity to scrutinise the detail at our next meeting. Only with respect of item one, because with item two, I'm going to make a recommendation that we overhaul and look at uh, delegated powers totally, which they feed back in. I don't know what the words are going to be yet, but are you all, would you all be happy that if item one, we ask Cabinet to defer that item till their next meeting? Pending. 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 Outcome. Yeah. Can we also have? Um, obviously, we've got you know we have risk in there, low, medium, but also can we have some figures around if you know if people did drop off, what the costs would be to the council as well, please. Um, I wasn't listening to Council Bailey. Uh, I was picking up on your point, uh, Councillor Couchman. Um, in terms of the second item, I don't see how it's different to the first one in terms of deferring, because we can have that in-depth discussion, or we could change that recommendation to each year under delegated powers, the Cabinet reconsider those fees, so at least it then becomes an agenda item for Cabinet each year rather than a delegated one. So we can do that without... Sorry prior to us having that in-depth conversation through the Constitution uh, around governance. Yeah, I, I think it's very important that any delegated decisions goes back to a committee so that it is transparently open for everybody to see that what decision has been made. Because I, as I say, going through this, all these minutes, um, which gave me brain ache, um, going through all these minutes, to try and find this minute, and I couldn't find it. So if we can't find it, what else, you know, I'm not for one minute casting any dispersions on the previous leader or the previous chief exec, but it, it's not good governance. So I think that what we can do then is put in a, uh, some words in there that they can be uh, delegated um, with the executive director organisation and council section one before 
being ratified by the cabinet or something like that. Are, are you happy with that? Yes? Are you happy with that? Item two. No, We're going, to, we're going to go to the vote, so we're going to check what we're going to say. Item one, we are going to defer the increase until we have had a full breakdown of costs at the next meeting in August. And we are going to ask Cabinet, therefore, to defer their decision until after our next meeting. Item two, we agree that each year under delegated powers, the cabinet member responsible da, 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 uh, for waste services will approve the price increase in consult consultation with the executive director organisation and the sections and the council section 151 officer before being ratified by the cabinet. So it's got to go back to the cabinet to be ratified. Are you happy with that? Right, okay. And the third one, um, I'm not sure about at the moment because I think it depends on. No, we can go with that one because we, if we're saying that that's what we're going to do under number under two, if two does, if if they don't like it, three three doesn't go. Right, um, I've got Council Oliver and uh, uh, Council. I'm sorry, I, it's some. I've got this. Oh, forget. Do I do apologise, Councillor Adams? <laughs> Keep. <laughs> I've been on the item number three recently, dropped because it might be higher of the actual cuts of delivery. Mm -hmm. So it should actually be based on the cuts of delivery, not on the CIP. Or it could be the all around. It could be even more. And for CIP, what required. So I think we should reject that one. Councillor Oates. Thank you. Um, I hear what Councillor Adams was saying and, and, and agree to an extent. Uh, however, I think it relates to that governance question. And I don't think it does link in with recommendation two because this is an automated increase which won't have any councillor ratification, whether it be leader, executive officer, and then go back to cabinet. The way it stands here is that's an automated increase, which is what councillor Adams was saying in terms of uh, regardless of cost. Uh, we know CPI is, is a basket of products. You know, we, we don't know the full impact of that particular basket on our particular service, whatever that service is. Uh, so so I, I'm not sure it does link in with, with number two and, uh, and I'm, I'm quite against automated increases that haven't had the opportunity for political uh, discussion and uh, thought each time. You want recommendation three dropped? Yes? So we need a mover and seconder. Right, I need a mover and seconder for the two recommendations that we are going to put to Cabinet, which are that we defer... Uh, the increase of the annual subscription until our next meeting having had a full breakdown of costs um, and that we ask cabinet to defer their decision until after we have met and that the second one is that um, after the section 151 officer we put in after being ratified, further ratified by cabinet yeah yeah, we're keeping the other points because they're straightforward. Right. Can I have a mover, please? Thank you, Councillor Price. Uh, can I have a seconder? Councillor M. Clark, thank you. All those in favour? Just one and two. Um, item uh, recommendation three is dropped. Okay. All those in favour? Against? No abstentions, thank you. Right, that was passed. Thank you very much. We now go to item seven.
which is exempt. So hang on, I've got to get me a bit of paper. Here we go. Right, item six, exclusion of the present public.